Hi, Epic Recaps here. And today I am going to explain to you a 2006 American war action film titled 300. If you want to be spoiled, keep watching. The movie opens with a narrated passage stating that when a Spartan baby is born, he is observed thoroughly. If there are any signs of weakness or sickness, the baby will be discarded. The boys are trained to fight at an early age and when they turn seven, they are separated from their mothers, and they go through an initiation of manhood before they can return home. One day in Sparta, a Persian messenger rides into the city and demands to speak to King Leonidas. He holds the skulls of other dead leaders in his hand. The messenger and his guards are led to the king, where he explains that he is there on behalf of Xerxes, the Persian god king who has already taken out thousands of cities, and wants the people of Sparta to bow down to them. The messenger warns King Leonidas to think carefully before he replies. His wife, Queen Gorgo, gives him a nod, and Leonidas turns to the messenger and points his spear in his face, making the Persian back up to the ledge of the black pit. The emissary is outraged and says that it is blasphemy to kill a messenger. Leonidas roars, and proceeds to kick the Persian minion into the pit. There is a law in Sparta, where if the king wants to go to war, he has to consult the oracle and the ephors, who live high in the clouds. Leonidas climbs the mountains to the ephors, giving them an offering of gold and explaining his plan to go north to stand against Xerxes's army. She tells him that Sparta will fall if it goes to war with the Persian god king. Leonidas is upset as he cannot just sit and do nothing. A flashback shows Spartan councilman Theron, paying the ephors with gold from the Persians, to tell the king that he cannot go to war. The next morning, Leonidas and his captain Artemis, are inspecting a battalion of 300 men. He notices that one of the men is the captain's son, Astinos, and the king comments that he is too young, but the captain insists that he is ready to fight. Theron and other members of the council join the king to inquire about his plans. Theron affirms the Spartan rule, reminding them that the oracle's words are law. Leonidas replies that he is merely out for a stroll and the 300 men are just his personal bodyguards. Theron sarcastically asks where the king will be walking to, and he replies with, the north. Before they head out, the queen gives Leonidas her necklace and says to come back with it, or on a shield, proving that Spartan women are just as tough as the men. While they are marching out, they meet with another group called the Arcadians. The leader of the Arcadians says they heard that Sparta was going out to fight against Xerxes and they want to join, but he is surprised at the small number of men the king brought with him. Leonidas asks some of the men from Arcadia what their professions are. A man replies that he is a sculptor, the next a blacksmith and another as a potter. Leonidas looks back at his army of 300 men, who roar announcing that they are professional warriors. Leonidas quips that he has more soldiers. The Arcadians are impressed and everyone marches down to the ocean together. Meanwhile, the queen wants to talk to the council to ask if they will send the whole Spartan army to help Leonidas fight against the Persians. A councilman tells her that she will be able to speak to them in two days. She replies that the king may not have two days. When the group finally get to the beach area, the Arcadians look fearful when they see the large number of boats in the Persian army. That night, a huge storm crashes down and causes chaos for the fleet. In the morning, the men see that the number of boats have not diminished. The Spartan men are happy as they can only hope to finally meet their match, and have a beautiful death. As the men are setting up a wall of stone, a convoy from the Persian army comes up to demand once again, that Sparta bow to the god king. He tells them that Xerxes admires their arrogance and strength, and promises that Sparta will be rewarded as the wealthiest city. He also pledges to leave the city's women and children alone if only they lay down their weapons and look to Xerxes as the leader. The envoy mocks the wall of stones the Spartans are building before he notices that in between those stones are the dead bodies of the Persian army scouts. He gets angry and attacks, but one of the Spartans cuts off the messenger's arm and orders him to tell Xerxes that Sparta will bow to no man. Back at the Spartan camp, a few of the men notice someone following them. A hunchback named Ephialtes, one of the ill Spartan babies that should have been killed as is their custom, wants to join the army. He warns Leonidas that there is a secret opening that the Persians can get through. He shows Leonidas that he has a strong spear arm but cannot raise up the heavy shield that he carries. Leonidas tells him that the Spartans use their shields to cover not only themselves but also the man to their left, 
and since Ephialtes cannot raise his shield, he is of no use. Ephialtes gets extremely upset. In the first battle, the Spartans use the narrow opening to their advantage, and easily defeat the first wave of the Persian army without a single body lost. While they catch their breath, the Persian army begins to shoot arrows at them. In unity, the Spartans fend off the arrows with their shields and call them cowards. During the break in the fighting, Xerxes comes out to meet with Leonidas. He offers Leonidas a chance to bow down to him, but the Spartan king replies that he can't because his thighs are sore from killing the men in the Persian army. Angered, Xerxes tells him that he will wipe out Sparta, and cut out the tongues and eyes of anyone who even mentions their name, and everyone on earth will forget Leonidas and the Spartans. In the next battle, Xerxes sends out his most feared troops known as the Immortals. 10,000 soulless monsters with black eyes, and teeth that are filed into fangs approach the army. They wear masks over their face, and their special weapon is a giant chained up monster. The Spartans beat them, but this time they do lose some of their men. Xerxes looks on at the defeat and the god king feels a human chill go up his spine. Over the next few battles, the Persians deploy mythical creatures that they have conquered from around the world. When Xerxes sees the army losing, he disciplines his generals by chopping off their heads. During one of these battles, Artemis sees his son die and he cries out as his heart is broken. It takes three men to pull him off his son. While both sides retreat once again, Leonidas calls to one of his men, Delios, who was hurt during the fighting. The king asks him to return home to tell the tale of 300 Spartan men who would stand against a god king. He knows that they will eventually die under the weight of the Persian army, and although he is sad that he will not see his wife again, he is happy to die for Sparta. He gives Delios the necklace to return to the queen. Meanwhile, in Sparta, the queen is meeting with Theron. She offers him something to drink to which he asks if it's poison. He says that the council will never allow an army to go to Leonidas, but suggests that he can persuade them to allow it if she sleeps with him. She agrees to the sacrifice, and he roughly takes her. He tells her that it will not be over quickly and she will not enjoy it. Ephialtes, angered by his rejection from Leonidas, has turned to Xerxes, and tells him about the secret passage that will allow the Persian army to sneak up on the Spartans. The next day, the queen gets to meet with the council. She gives a moving speech to try to convince them to send the army to help the king. Some of the members are touched by what she is saying and are starting to agree with her. When she ends her speech, Theron sarcastically applauds her. He turns against her, and tells everyone that she offered herself to him, but that he is an honest man and turned her down. She angrily goes after him, but two guards grab her and take her from the room. She breaks free from them, and stabs Theron with one of the guard's swords. She tells him as he is dying, that he will not enjoy it. When she pulls the sword out, a money pouch falls to the ground, spilling out the Persian coins, and they realize that he is a traitor. It is only Leonidas and what's left of his army. The Persian army is everywhere and surrounding them. With Xerxes standing to watch the victory, one of his minions asks Leonidas to bow down to the god king. Instead of refusing this time, Leonidas takes off his helmet, puts down his weapons, and kneels down. Fooling them, a Spartan soldier runs up and jumps off of Leonidas' back to spear the minion to death. As everyone starts fighting, the king picks up his spear and throws it at Xerxes. Wounding him with a bloody cut along his cheek, Leonidas proves that Xerxes is but a man and not a god. Eventually, one by one, the Spartans fall, even Leonidas. Delios returns home to give the queen the necklace and spreads the word about the sacrifice of Leonidas and the 300 Spartans. The movie ends one year later, with Delios leading a large army, and they charge forward. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment down below. For more movie recaps, don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. See you next time.